No information paper has been issued since the last meeting. Items for discussion at the next meeting. Please refer to the list, uh, the two lists. Please uh, ask the administration to join us now. The next meeting will be held on the 16th of June, um, Monday at 4:30 uh, p.m. Government proposed items. A mental health policy and services. B proposed regulatory framework of medical devices. In our April meeting, members uh, agreed to have a public hearing for deputations uh, in respect of uh, item A, mental health policy and services. And now the government is proposing that uh, we should uh, have that hearing in June. Regarding proposed regulatory framework of medical devices, at the last meeting, some members asked our uh, secretariat uh, to carry a study on uh, the regulation of such devices in overseas jurisdictions. The Secretariat is still uh, working on the uh, research framework, uh, which will be presented to members in, in the June meeting for members' endorsement. So for the June meeting, the next meeting to be held in June, we are going to have two items, mental health policy and services, proposed regulatory framework of medical services. Any comments, members? If not, then uh, that's uh, what we are going to have. And if uh, you have got uh, new ideas, please uh, inform the Secretariat. And uh, we are going to have a longer meeting, uh, depending on the number of deputations which will come uh, to the next meeting. Next item, refurbishment of Hong Kong Buddhist Hospital. The uh, relevant uh, brief and paper have been uh, given to members. All members uh, have been invited to attend this uh, meeting for this item. It's a funding proposal for those who have uh, those members who have uh, direct or indirect uh, pecuniary interest involved in this project. Please uh, make your declaration. Welcome, Secretary. Over to you for an introduction. Uh, Chairman, members, this paper asks members to propose the, uh, to, to support the proposed refurbishment of Hong Kong Buddhist Hospital. Uh, Hong Kong Buddhist Hospital is a community hospital in, in the Kowloon Central Cluster of the uh, Hospital Authority. It provides inpatient services covering a number of uh, specialties. It currently has uh, 324 beds, most of which are for convalescent care. Uh, it built in uh, 1970. The Hong Kong Buddhist Hospital uh, has been uh, subject to a lot of wear and tear after so many years. Most of the facilities are not up quite up to modern day, modern day standards. Although the hospital has carried out a um, regular maintenance and special repairs, but so far no major or the upgrading or maintenance have been carried out. Uh, the uh, beds and wards are old and worn, and there are problems, uh, a growing problem of uh, failure of uh, medical and healthcare equipment. So there's a need to carry out a major refurbishment of, of the hospital to upgrade the standards and the service quality to uh, modern standards. We propose to carry out all the 11 wards and uh, relevant facilities and, or to, and to provide uh, the necessary equipment to uh, upgrade the environment so that we can uh, 
carry out the project, uh, pilot project on uh, convalescent services here, and also to uh, improve the uh, standards of care. And because of the uh, growing demand for convalescent beds in the central Kowloon, the Kowloon Central cluster of the HA, we pro propose to uh, provide an additional 130 beds, uh, including the related facilities. The estimated cost is uh, $480 million. With uh, member support, uh, we would uh, submit an application to the uh, Finance Committee uh, in July. And then, if uh, approved, uh, the works uh, would commence in August. The first available beds uh, will be commissioned uh, in July 2016, and the entire project, entire refurbishment works, will be completed in September 2018. Uh, I would like to appeal to members for their support now. Uh, we have only got one member who would like to raise questions. Would uh, other members join in later? All right, one member. Four minutes. Mr. Pun Siu Peng. Well, I have a simple question. In principle, I support uh, this uh, proposed uh, refurbishment project of Hong Kong Buddhist Hospital. According to the uh, paper, you are going to uh, provide 130 additional beds uh, on the sixth floor of blocks A and B. So instead of 320, you are going to have 450 beds. I don't know whether uh, space-wise you can uh, make sure that the beds will not be too crowded there. And also, during the refurbishment works, uh, ex existing services uh, are likely to be uh, disturbed. So what, what plans have you got to mitigate that? And uh, the Under Secretary has said that the cost, uh, the uh, the sum applied for is going to be uh, $480 million. And you know that there is a filibuster going on. If you can uh, apply in good time, uh, maybe you can uh, get the money also in good time. But the tendering exercise was uh, completed in February, and you expect to get approval in July. What if uh, the approval uh, is, not going, is not achieved uh, in July? Under Secretary, uh, the first question is about the additional beds. As I understand it, uh, there are also the overnight rooms, call rooms, and and, and ro rooms for the staff uh, on call. Uh, so they are not wards. Uh, the current uh, usage is not for uh, wards. I will ask Dr. Choi to supplement on the next question as well. As for contingency plans, well, we've been uh, waiting for the refurbishment project to go ahead for a long time. We have no other alternative but to secure member support uh, as soon as possible, and then we can proceed to the uh, Finance Committee. Dr. Choi, the first question is about conversion of the, the space on the sixth floor, and then uh, they are the same in size as the fifth floor. So the uh, uh, the walls will be as big as the other existing walls, so there will be no uh, overcrowdedness. We are going to relocate uh, the reading rooms, staff rooms, and other facilities to the uh, to Block D. Uh, so that's for uh, staff uh, use, and also during the uh, project period, uh, the works will be. Phased existing hospital services will not be affected. Okay, okay that's all. Any follow-up question? Uh, in other words, um, you will do it in different stories, and patients do not have to be moved around. Am I right? 
Now the existing wards, um, we do not have to do anything to affect them. So existing services can be maintained. So during the renovation, we are renovating the vacant areas as well as the rooms which are not wards. Any other questions? Now, if not, then I will ask one question. Now, what is the uh, area of the Buddhist hospital? Uh, Mr. Lee? I'd just like to know whether you are making best use of the land. Roughly, do you know what is the, the footprint, the area? It has six stories, am I right? Yes, it's six stories. Of course, we are making best use of the uh, available floor space. We are asking um, for an extension um, of the floor area as uh, stipulated in the um, floor plan. So we are trying to stretch uh, to the limit. So we are only allowed to build up to six stories. But the buildings in the vicinity are not so short. Because we, uh, belong, we belong to the GIC uh, site, so we are not like the uh, residential areas. So for these GIC sites, um, we have to have a, a height restriction. Now, there are other public hospitals more than 10 stories. Well, it differs from one area to another. In Wang Tai Sin, because of the former airport, um, the building height is restricted. But we've already uh, applied for an extension because the airport has moved. But for hospitals, um, they have a, a limit cannot be too tall. Now, because land is scarce, so can you go back and, and check to see, well, because the hospital is so old already, and what about, you know, rebuilding it altogether and have a much taller uh, building? I have been to the Buddhist hospital, even the the floor space is, uh, I mean, the parking space is outdoors. And I think there are other members wanting to ask questions. Yes, uh, four minutes. Um, I asked about paragraph four, which says that 183 additional beds will be provided. Now, now how do you arrive at these 130? Uh, additional beds for inpatients. How do you arrive at this figure? And in the longer term, is this figure adequate? Secondly, paragraph 5, apart from the uh, previous question, we now have a fire safety uh, issue here, not meeting the current standard. Now, in what way is it not uh, adequate? And how come uh, this is allowed to continue? Is it the case that the uh, current regulations have been uh, sidestepped or, or violated? Because you're talking about uh, risk and danger here. And then paragraph 10, um, the there may be disruption of services. Uh, what services will be disrupted, and to what extent, and uh, what sort of uh, remedial measures do you have? Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Wong. Now I ask Dr. Lee to answer the first question. Yes, thank you for your question. Now we have been uh, looking at the population figures 
and then uh, heeding the planning department's uh, statistics and we look at current demands and whenever there is a new set of figures uh, we will redo our calculation. So apart from looking at the needs of the uh, district, we also look at whether there are other hospitals and whether beds can be increased. Now with the additional 130 beds, uh, we we have come to this um, figure using the uh, approach that I just mentioned. And uh, there may, it is possible that there are new hospitals, for example, the new one in Kai Tech. So all these factors uh, have been taken into account. And that's how we arrive at the figure. So not related to uh, uh, treating the aging population. Is that right? You are only uh, making maximum use of the, the, the floor space. Not really. We look at the needs of the population, whether they are getting older, whether the population is increasing in number. So we look at how beds can be increased. And at the moment, for Buddhist hospital, is 130. Now, will the 130 be enough um, for the district in the coming one or two decades? Well, but it's not just one hospital. There are other hospitals, new hospitals. So all these will be uh, in, taken into account. What about the fire safety regulations? as well as uh, Ms. Wong's point on paragraph 10. And I think Dr. Chuck already answered this uh, in some way. Um, but now, well, for the um, fire safety regulations, because it was built in 1970, it met the requirements uh, at that time. Now, if these fire regulations get renewed, the old buildings do not have to follow the latest regulations unless and until um, their renovations. So according to law, old buildings do not have to follow the current regulations. Okay, are services affected? Paragraph 10, any disruption of services? Uh, as I was saying, current services will not be uh, affected. Uh, but there might be some exceptions. Now, for fire safety, if we have to install sprinklers in the wards, then that would be a case of uh, wards being affected. But we're going to do it uh, in phases. So maybe at one time, um, the eight beds would be affected, then we work on one cubicle, and then we work on another cubicle, so it will not be closing down the whole ward. So, I mean, that's our uh, general principle. Uh, Mr. Kwok, I think um, we are not really given a very good response. Now, if you look at Kowloon West or Kowloon Central, uh, it doesn't really matter. If you look at the whole of the Hong Kong, uh, whether you're talking about uh, mental uh, rehabilitation beds or other types of beds, there is a severe shortage. In the coming 10, 20 years, um, you will see that um, for the new Kai Tak Hospital, there is no progress yet. And even with the Kai Tak Hospital, we still have a shortage of hospital beds. Now, your point about the uh, convalescence uh, beds. Now, in fact, every day uh, we, we see something um, which is not terribly happy. Now, whether you're talking about QEH or Accountant Hospital, they are asked to leave hospitals and they cannot go back home. And then the other um, care homes um, elderly homes, you have to wait until you die and you still don't get a bed. And then there are, uh, well, elderly patients asked to leave the hospitals <coughs> and even doctors are against it. Of course, if you increase 130, I am not against it. But whether it's adequate, you cannot really answer the question. Now, you, you are asked about the shortage. Now, for convalescence, what is the figure? 
uh, what is the short for? Now for the log full area, all along we do not have enough space to provide services for the local people, for specialty wards for example. And people have waited a long, long time um, for a women's health care centre, for example. So we need space to build these hospitals. Now, you know Buddhist is hospitals very near to the Lokfu MTR station. And it has a very clear role to serve the uh, vicinity. And it can also help the uh, hospital authority to help the uh, family members f uh, to attend the um, well, health care centers nearby or even the um, children assessment center. But then there is a shortfall in everything medical. Now, have you discussed with the uh, health, uh, the relevant departments to increase such services? Now, we want you to do the work, but it seems that, uh, w w well, space is being wasted. Now, there are six stories. I was in the Buddhist hospital in 1986, 87. Nothing was changed. Nothing has been changed so far. Now, for example, the car park can become taller. So don't waste the land. Now, you are not telling us the truth. What exactly is the shortfall? So you are not being uh, uh, entirely uh, honest. Now, um, what you just said, uh, Mr. Kwok, about the aging population and the shortage of beds, this is uh, a problem that the whole of Hong Kong is facing. Now, coming back to the Buddhist hospital, now, when the Buddhist hospital was first renovated, um, no additional beds were provided. But now we are proposing this uh, 130 extra beds. And you can see that this is one of the um, hospitals in the Kowloon Central area. And then if you look at the other KCC um, hospitals, well, you have to look at the whole thing. And then the whole of Hong, whole of Kowloon, and the HK, uh, the Hong Kong Hospital Authority, is looking at the whole territory's needs, and see how the hospitals in different areas can meet those needs. So, Doctor Lee, do you have anything to add? Apart from uh, increasing. Bears through renovation and redevelopment. Uh, we have also secured funding for uh, minor projects to increase uh, bears. Uh, some 850 uh, bears can be added to meet the growing demand uh, due to population aging. And uh, we are going to do that uh, in the coming 10 years. Ms. Han Chiang. Well, in 2009, you had a plan to get it started. I don't know why you have to wait until now. And now you have uh, many projects uh, going on. And uh, for some others, you have not yet uh, been able to start. Uh, for example, the Children's Hospital, according to some press reports, we don't know when it will start. Uh, the same for Kai Tag and uh, uh, Q QEH and Guangwa Hospital are also going to be uh, covered by new plans. My concern is whether the uh, Buddhist hospital project would affect existing services. Secondly, I know th uh, this hospital is uh, providing cavalescent care, but uh, that district is uh, seriously affected by uh, aging population. Are you going to provide more outpatient and uh, specialist outpatient services? And as the chairman has pointed out, can you make the best use of the site? Uh, we have the, the Builders Hospital, a small hospital, another one, Our Lady. Uh, 
uh, Catholic Hospital. Uh, can you combine the two sites, or can you provide more services, acute services, outpatient services, and uh, specialist outpatient services, serving Wong Tai Sin as a major hospital? Uh, you ask for four hundred and fifty million dollars, and you are only going to get a small increase of uh, one hundred and thirty beds. And uh, when this is completed, uh, you are going to have the same problem of uh, demand, high demand, outstripping the supply again. Can you provide more through this project? As um, Dr. Chuck has said. Under uh, this project, the services will be affected uh, to a small extent, but uh, they would uh, monitor the progress to make sure that there are no major disruptions. Uh, the other point is about uh, increasing the uh, service provision. This time, the, the main increase is in the number of beds, 130 additional beds. And they're also going to the, to enhance uh, daycare and also the pilot uh, integrative medicine in uh, palliative care. As uh, Dr. Lee has said, there are certain constraints uh, that we have to uh, face, and the uh, HA is uh, looking at the uh, Kai. Kowloon, including Kai Tech as a whole, and uh, they will look at the uh, services, the f uh, f roles and functions of different hospitals. Uh, the Buddhist Hospital is a community hospital. So we would like to uh, get the uh, refurb refurbishment project uh, started as soon as possible, so that we can get these new beds uh, at the earliest possible uh, date. Any follow up? As I've said, many hospitals uh, may have their new plans uh, postponed. So, can we uh, put this on our agenda as a major item for future meetings? Dr. Fernando Zhang, who have been uh, visiting. Buddhist hospital f for many many years. My ma mother used to work there as a nurse. When I was a secondary student, I already visited the hospital a lot. And then there was a friend who suffered from cancer. He spent his last days in uh, the Buddhist hospital. German, I. I think you agree that uh, the environment uh, at the Buddhist hospital is uh, rather depressing. Because uh, there are many terminally ill uh, cancer patients there, and uh, their hospice care is not really quite uh, satisfactory. You are going to the expand your palliative care. Can you do improve your hospice care? Can you improve uh, the environment? The hospital was completed in 1970. Some more than 40 years have passed. So, uh, have you considered redevelopment? And uh, what's the, what are the pros and cons of uh, redevelopment, uh, vis a vis refurbishment? Maybe you can get more space through redevelopment. Uh, I don't know why you have made such a decision. I hope uh, you would uh, work harder on improving the environment. You, your, the hospital provides a. Uh, Convalescent care. The patients might have to spend months 
for up, more than a year there. Unlike uh, acute hospitals where patients would stay for weeks. And also, I don't know whether you are going to provide more places under uh, the day care services. So we are facing shortage uh, across the board, whatever best we are talking about. Uh, especially in the uh, NT West and NT East, and of course uh, we support uh, this uh, project. If you can uh, provide better daycare services, you can also reduce uh, the demand for uh, beds, inpatient care. Uh, are you going to provide just geriatric day services? What about uh, young persons who are chronically ill? Under Secretary, uh, Dr. Chiang, you are right. The demand uh, on the whole uh, for healthcare services is uh, ever on the rise. So, to, uh, apart from uh, increasing the number of beds, uh, we should, uh, through refurbishment or redevelopment, uh, expand uh, day services. Uh, that would uh, provide some relief uh, for uh, meeting the demand on beds. As for the geriatric day services at the hospital, I'll, I'll defer to Dr. Cho. Thank you for your questions, uh, Dr. Cheung. In this uh, refurbishment project, we are going to provide a new day care center in uh, Brock C. There are a few Parts. This, there is a geriatric day center, uh, which uh, is in short supply in the district. And also, we are going to provide a day rehabilitation center for the stroke patients. And also, there is also going to be a day center for palliative care. And uh, with uh, all these uh, in place, uh, our Convalescent services will be more comprehensive. Uh, in the past, we only have uh, convalescent beds and uh, outreach uh, home visit services. So there will be a, a wider coverage in uh, uh, re rehabilitation and convalescent service. And of, of course, we can provide uh, a bigger service quota. More places will be available. Uh, Dr. Joseph Lee. I understand that this is about seeking our agreement for the proposal to go forward. Your paper is poorly drafted. Please review reviewed the way the paper is drafted. It has 320 convalescent beds, and uh, they have different specialties. But, uh, they they will take on patients uh, transfer from. Uh, QEH and so on and so forth. And if the situation deteriorate, the the patient uh, conditions deteriorate, they will be transferred out, or they may go home. You should tell us that uh, the uh, scope of service will be the same. The Buddha's hospital will not be a, turned into a new hospital to take care of the uh, healthcare uh, needs of uh, Wang Tai Sin. Will support uh, the proposal. You are going to complete the project in 2018, and uh, you are going to increase uh, the number of beds. Please tell the finance committee on the on the on the kind of beds uh, that will be added. And uh, would uh, the hospital be affected in uh, 2018 by the plan for QEH and Kitech and Kitech Hospital? I don't know how many more stories or how many premises, uh, how much, how many beds uh, will be added. How long can uh, those uh, beds uh, be be there? I hope you can uh, redraft the paper so as to mis mis uh, avoid misunderstanding. Thank you, Dr. Lee. <clears throat> as I've said, and I thank Dr. Lee for uh, his clarification. The Buddhist hospital. Sro is a community hospital. 
as Dr. Lee points out, the beds in the hospital are there to support uh, the operations of uh, QEH. The additional 130 beds are for rehabilitation and uh, convalescence. Any follow-up? Dr. Kwok for the second round. Uh, we have both somewhat overrun. Please be uh, brief. Uh, Under Secretary, please uh, think, uh, please reconsider this. This is not a problem faced by the HA alone. We know that uh, in the in the districts, uh, you have to provide services uh, involving both the HA and the D Department of Health, and you must respond to changing uh, needs. Takes you some time before you start this project, so please uh, consider again how best to go about it. And Dr. Cheung asks whether blocks A and B, the lobby, and so on and so forth uh, will be uh, covered by the refurbishment. Uh, the word use was uh, depressing. I, I tend to agree. Right from the very beginning, uh, it seems that uh, the hospital presents a, an image that uh, the patients there are just waiting to pass away. Can you uh, cover uh, cover the environment aspect and uh, improve the environment for patients and their families? Uh, the question is about uh, uh, community healthcare services, uh, geriatric uh, services, women's uh, health center, and so on and so forth. Well, they come under the Department Department of Health, and that, that is also part of your portfolio. Uh, the Buddhist Hospital is a convalescent uh, hospital. It doesn't provide the services you have referred to. And of course, the general outpatient service is provided by the Dep hospital authority. We will talk to the Department of Health uh, to try to gain, gain a better understanding of the, the needs uh, in the district. Uh, I'll ask uh, Mr. Lee to say something about the project, the refurbishment project. Well, there's going to be a major uh, refurbishment for the hospital. We will use uh, some new uh, material to improve the environment and to uh, make sure that it's uh, less uh, stressful. And uh, certainly, we would like to make sure that uh, it's go is is going to provide a better environment for patients and the families, and the lobby will be covered. The site coverage is uh, 10,466, and uh, the current uh, GFA is uh, 23,000 square meters. So it's one hectare and uh, 23,000 uh, square meters. I think I must uh, protest uh, on behalf of our nurses and doctors there. Th this hospital is not a place for patients to wait for their uh, days to end. It's for convalescence. Uh, nurses and doctors are working hard to help the patient recover. Can you please uh, provide more information? On uh, how the environment can be improved in terms of uh, furnishings and uh, design, uh, please let us know what you would do to improve the environment. So, from what I've heard, members are in support of the proposed project. So, I would say the panel uh, is supportive. Uh -huh. you go. <coughs> Now, Ms. Cheung talked about the overall planning of the hospital, so this will be something for a future meeting. And uh, Professor Chen is saying uh, you are paying, paying attention to the uh, overall population of Kowloon, and I'm sure we will uh, discuss this again. Now, for just one hospital, we do not have the overall picture. 
Now that report uh, will be completed sometime this year. Yes, for the hospital authority. Yes, um, uh, Dr. Lee, when will that be completed? Now I think for the um, KCC area, I think we are looking at uh, middle to late uh, 2014. And then the report will be completed. Not just KCC, but should the Buddhist hospital be turned to or refer to the uh, Kowloon East cluster? Uh, I mean, KCC is relatively uh, well off, but it's the, the Kowloon East area that is having a shortfall. So, in the longer term, do you have a, a, a better planning? based on the population distribution. Now, if you're looking at the whole uh, macro territorial area, um, um, we, we, we had one report earlier, but it was said that uh, you would come back to us in half a year's time to one year's time. It was pretty uh, superficial, nothing specific. But maybe we can go back and uh, find out more. Because uh, if you come to us, you know, one hospital after another, we do not have an overall picture and we don't know whether we should be renovating or, um, you know, rebuilding. Okay, now we move on to um, another agenda item now. Um, and uh, this is going to involve delegations and deputations, so we'll invite them to come in. <coughs> Thank you, um, um, friends and guests, for coming here to share your views on the integrative approach. Um, now, I'd just like to remind you that uh, your speeches will not be protected by the electrical PNP ordinance. In other words, you are responsible for the words you say as well as your uh, written submissions. And I guess all of you are going to speak in Cantonese, right? So um, you will not be needing any translation, I guess. Now we have... Um, a list of reminder for those 
uh, coming in the public gallery, and these are for security reasons, and they are tabled for your reference. So those who are auditing can ask for such uh, a, a piece of paper from our security staff. Now we have a really tight schedule and strictly three minutes because we have 31 uh, deputations and it will, this will take us all the way to 7 o'clock, uh, possibly longer. And if you cannot say everything, then you can supplement with uh, written submissions. And uh, so following the order, we have Mr. Chen Ming Kuang, uh, Chairperson of the Hong Kong Registered Chinese Medicine Practitioners Association Limited. Yes, I'm Chen Ming Kuang, and the Chinese Medicine Practitioners Association has 6,000 members and very representative. And for the development of this integrated um, item, I have the following views. Now, we're happy to hear that um, the need is uh, proposed um, and to provide for the three universities to work on these areas as well as scientific um, investigation, training um, both uh, Chinese and Western medicine. Now, we would like to have a Chinese hospital, Chinese medicine hospital built. Now, but if the government cannot include this as a public hospital, we will also accept a non-profit making body to run a Chinese medicine hospital because this is something we need very, very much to provide training, teaching, as well as scientific investigation. Now, we would like to see a purely Chinese medical uh, hospital, or well, TCM uh, the hospital, but we know this is not possible under the existing legal framework, so we are not against an integrated uh, CW um, hospital. Now, so before we have a, a purely Chinese medicine hospital, um, our registered uh, practitioners can refer patients to these hospitals. So these are the points of uh, our uh, Practitioners Association Limited. Next, we move on to Hong Kong Baptist Hospital. Um, Professor Liu Ai Ping. Okay, now I have four points. First of all, on the aims of the development as well as uh, clinical training and to provide all the needs for inpatients and to do research for the longer term as well as for um, education. And the reasons for doing so because we have 350 graduates every year and uh, about 74 percent um, and we have two main and this will affect our um, impact on the uh, clinical training. We do not only just do training but also provide our emphasis on public health and hygiene and to have a teaching hospital with um, experienced professors doing teaching as well as uh, research. And then we can also use this Chinese medicine hospital to do clinical tests. And this will be a very good base for doing that. And thirdly, for um, an integrated uh, CW approach, we should look at the specialties of Chinese medicine and to highlight its benefits. But at the moment, we should emphasize um, a Chinese medicine approach and to strive for the best treatment for our patients. 
and there are a lot of studies which say that for many um, diseases, um, the uh, Chinese medicine has benefits, and the registered practitioners have basic Western medical uh, training, and a lot of these um, Western doctors are also interested in um, Chinese medicine. Thank you. And you can um, well give your speech to us because I'm not sure I follow everything you said. Okay. We now have um, Miss Lam or Miss Ling. Now I work for more than ten years, and I understand that um, a self-balancing. Uh, approach for a uh, Chinese hospital is very, very important. We have to be able to balance the books. Now, to be able to balance the books is not really easy, and it is almost impossible and a lack of uh, respect. And this will stifle the development of um, Chinese medicine. Now, you are talking about $120 for two days medicine. And then, for every week, you have to spend more more than three to five hundred dollars. This is way beyond the public affordability. But for Western medicine, it's forty five uh, dollars only. So uh, people will know how to choose. Now, NGO participation and NGO balancing these books are two different things. Now, at the moment, um, you have uh, public subsidy for almost ninety percent for the Western medicine. And then the uh, finance is relatively independent. But for Chinese medicine, it is not part of the public system. And there are no such um, salary scale uh, decided. So it's really much uh, lower, whether you are talking about the various grades of medical practitioners. And it's also very, very low. And it's not proportional to their talents. So the government is not respecting the Chinese medical practitioners, and I think this is discrimination. According to international practice, a teaching hospital should have a forty or post forty or fifty percent higher budget than other hospitals. But in Hong Kong, you are, you expect such a hospital to be self-financing? This is an insult. The government passed the buck to the uh, Chinese medicine board, saying that uh, the self-financing model has been agreed on. I don't know how the discussion uh, was carried out. We would like to know the reasons for that decision. Chinese medicine and Western medicine are both for curing patients. We need to attract talented people. We must have proper training before Chinese medicine can be developed properly. The government must be more committed. The government is duty bound to promote the development of Chinese medicine in Hong Kong. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Ms. Law Yiling. Chairman, members, I'm a TCM working in a tripartite uh, NGO, Chinese medicine. I thank you for giving me this opportunity. First, the government is preparing for the establishment of a of a Chinese hospital, but I have high expectations of such a development. Uh, other deputations have been uh, talking about uh, the relevant issues. I want to highlight three. First, there's going to be the integrated Chinese Western medicine for the uh, Chinese med med medicine hospital, but it will be uh, practiced first in uh, wards uh, under West Western medicine doctors. I propose that the Bureau should, under the pilot scheme, establish uh, another pilot scheme uh, which will be led by Chinese uh, med medicine practitioners as, so that we can trial out the uh, feasible uh, operational modes for Chinese medicine hospital. In the long run, uh, Chinese medicine should be part of the uh, public health care system. For example, the, there should be more the subsidy, subsidy for Chinese medicine uh, services. At present, because of the need to be self-financing, uh, the, the fees and charges for Chinese medi 
medicine services are much higher, and this is a, a restriction placed on people's choice. And there should be a proper pay scale or salary structure for uh, uh, Chinese medicine practitioners to attract uh, the right uh, people or people of the right caliber. And we also hope that the Chinese uh, medicine board uh, can have uh, representatives who are local graduates. Many such graduates have been uh, providing Chinese medicine service uh, for more than 10 years. Many of them are working in the NGO, um, Chinese medicine clinics, and they should be represented to represent to, so that we uh, the situation on the ground can be more accurately reflected. Thank you. Next, we have Mr. Gray, Ms. Gray Xu. I'm, uh, my name is uh, Grace Yu. Uh, I represent an association for the promotion of Chinese medicine. Uh, s establishing a Chinese medicine hospital is good for the public, good for ch Chinese medicine and Chinese medicine practitioners, which have a public, publicly run Chinese medicine hospital. Uh, comprising local practitioners. In the past hundred of years, because we were under colonial rule, Chinese medicine, which has uh, thousands of years of uh, history, were not was not recognized, and uh, Chinese medicine practitioner could not uh, practice freely. And now. We are part of the motherland. It is uh, a matter of urgency that we should set up a Chinese medicine hospital in Hong Kong. It's not just good for uh, the development of Chinese medicine as an industry. It's also good for both Hong Kong people and uh, visitors who may want to receive treatment in the tradition of Chinese medicine in Hong Kong, and th and then we can uh, give full play to the strength of Chinese medicine, and also graduates trained in Chinese medicine from the three hospitals can uh, practice in Hong Kong, can get training in Hong Kong without the need to go elsewhere, and a public Chinese medicine hospital will become. A beacon, a beacon for the development of Chinese medicine in Hong Kong. And uh, for ch the mainland, the direction for developing the healthcare system is one of the uh, integration of Chinese and Western medicine, according to Article 138. Hong of the basic law, Hong Kong SAR government can uh, establish and develop its own the healthcare policies to develop the Chinese and Western medicine. So, I think a lot of uh, medical Chinese medicine practitioners are of the view that uh, the government should do more, um, provide more resources for Chinese medicine services instead of just providing the site for a hospital. Ms. Holman Kit and Ms. Lam Chui Lin are not here, so the next speaker is uh, Mr. Si Ga Keng. Chairman, members, good afternoon. I've been working in a tripartite NGO Chinese medicine clinic for three years. Let me say something about the pilot scheme. The so called tripartite uh, uh, clinic has been uh, involved in uh, integration treatment with uh, Western medicine to treat uh, cancer patients and other who patients suffering from stroke. Uh, we would uh, do the acupuncture and uh, treat the same patient as together with uh, doctors of Western medicine. So it's, a, it's similar to the uh, mode uh, proposed under the uh, pilot scheme, but there are things that need to be improved. As uh, Ms. Law has said, uh, this pilot scheme was uh, 
is led by uh, doctors of Western medicine. The pilot scheme is not going to guide us on how to develop Chinese medicine services. So we should, so we should take one more step. There should be uh, Chinese medicine wards in hospitals, and there should be the pilot schemes uh, led by Chinese medicine practitioners so as to guide the future direction. If we just concentrate on rehabilitation and convalescence, uh, the uh, hospital uh, will be providing similar to uh, services as the present Chinese medicine clinics. We, we can only provide uh, follow-up services after the patient is discharged at present. So it's not uh, dissimilar with uh, a, an outpatient clinic or convalescence uh, hospital. The uh, Chinese medicine practitioner should be involved in the uh, later stages of uh, treatment for patients. Otherwise, this hospital will become a clinic. And also let me talk about the uh, self-financing mode uh, for the tripartite uh, pilot scheme. Because of the insufficient subsidy from government, uh, the clinic uh, will sacrifice certain things in uh, relation to training of uh, Chinese medicine practitioners. We have made suggestions that uh, junior practitioners should be uh, given certain uh, hours of uh, supervision from senior uh, medical practitioners. But uh, now the experts hired are not involved in teaching but uh, in uh, providing the clinical services. And some uh, newly graduated uh, medical uh, Chinese medicine practitioners could not even uh, work independently for just a few more few hours in the first few years. I I hope the Chinese medicine hospital will not be uh, rendered uh, like a clinic. Uh, I'm a uh, Chinese medicine practitioner. My name is Li Wing Kong. Uh, my union is a newly formed is a newly formed uh, organization. It represents uh, Chinese medicine practitioners, both serving and uh, former uh, Chinese medicine practitioners. We have uh, provided a submission in which there are three major suggestions. The government should run the future Chinese medicine hospitals in order. Uh, rather than having it uh, operated on a self-financing basis. Because on that basis, Chinese medicine cannot benefit. Uh, a person, you pay $120 for one prescription and a treatment. And if you go to a Chinese medicine clinic, you, you have to spend uh, $370 for a week's uh, service. And in the future, under the integrated approach, uh, uh, Doctors of Western medicine will also be involved, so the cost will be even higher and out of reach uh, for ordinary people. So it will just be a, a service for the rich. And also the hospital is for teaching as well. According to international practice, a teaching hospital's budget is uh, 40 or 50 percent uh, more than the ordi an ordinary hospital. And it should not be uh, operated by an NGO. It should be. Uh, operator like uh, Queen Mary Hospital or the Prince of Wales Hospital. If the operation is self-financing, then uh, there's a need to sustain the viability, and uh, as a result, uh, teaching quality would be compromised, as uh, Mr. C has told you. And also, we are facing a problem of uh, brain drain. Chinese medicine practitioners do not get a pay scale from government. It's just pay, they are just paid like uh, dispensers of the HA. It doesn't really reflect the professionalism of uh, Chinese medicine practitioners. And uh, there's a mismatch between the remuneration and responsibility. And it's difficult to retain uh, qualified uh, Chinese medicine practitioners to serve the public. The problem boils down to one of the self-financing uh, mode. So this must change. 
We must have a public Chinese medicine hospital, which is also a teaching hospital. And graduates of uh, local uh, Chinese medicine uh, faculties must be taken on board in the uh, decision-making process. They are locally educated. They are at the front line. They have experience of uh, providing service in the uh, private and public sectors. Their participation in the uh, decision-making process uh, would uh, enable us to get a better direction for future development. Uh, the Bureau hasn't uh, made a decision on uh, whether the uh, Chinese medicine services should be uh, led by Chinese medicine uh, uh, practitioners. I think this should be decided based on uh, patient's choice. Chinese medicine must be led by Chinese medicine practitioners. The current pilot project is uh, led by doctors of Western medicine. We hope uh, the government will launch a pilot scheme, uh, which is uh, led by the Chinese uh, medicine practitioners. We have received uh, your uh, bundle. Uh, perhaps uh, we should leave some time for other deputations. Next, uh, we have a Chinese medicine practice subcommittee under the Chinese medicine development committee. Ms. Feng Jiu. Thank you, Chairman. I'm a member of the Chinese Medicine Development Committee and also Chairman of the uh, Chinese Medicine Practice Subcommittee under the committee. Let me introduce to you the subcommittee's uh, views on uh, how to develop Chinese medicine. We are happy that the government has accepted the subcommittee's recommendations in recognition in the recognition that Hong Kong has to set up a Chinese medicine hospital and a site has been earmarked for this purpose so as to provide both uh, outpatient and hospital services uh, under Chinese medicine and also the hospital will be used for the, the, by the three universities providing training in Chinese medicine on uh, professional training and development. The subcommittee has had some preliminary uh, discussion, and under the current legislative uh, framework, the Chinese medicine hospital uh, should have a uh, integrated Chinese Western medicine, but led by Chinese medicine, which is uh, better than uh, just a pure Chinese medicine hospital. We will continue to look at the feasible the mode of trans. Uh, operation of the proposed Chinese medicine hospital and submit our views to the administration, we must think through and base uh, the planning on uh, detailed studies. We propose that uh, there should be studies carried out by the HA. For example, uh, there should be the continuation of the ICWM pilot project, and also there should be the provision of follow-up uh, treatment to discharge patients, and we should also look to other uh, places for borrowing their uh, experience. We should also explore how different uh, healthcare professionals uh, should be uh, trained and educated to tie in with the development of uh, Chinese medicine, including uh, the uh, provision of uh, integrated Chinese Western medicine and uh, outpatient service. We have uh, a rep submitted a report on this. A number of issues have yet to be explored. We understand the public are very concerned about the way of uh, Chinese medicine development. We we'll continue to uh, communicate with the stakeholders and reflect their views to the subcommittee, and we welcome uh, views from uh, people and stakeholders and organizations which 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 are considered which are uh, uh, involved in in this field of development yes uh, also please uh, give us your written submission we now have uh, we'll skip i think two items and move on to uh, Mr. Wong Kwai Sang. Yes, um, yes, I'm really a, a consumer or a user 
I'd like to thank all the doctors, Chinese or Western. In fact, even for horses, um, they have acupuncture. And I work for the jockey club, and I've also worked in unions, and I've been to the um, well, worker safety associations. And from 2009, I've been to these um, uh, hospitals, which give prescribed only certain ointment, which is not really very good. But then I was cured by some acupuncturist. Now, for occupational um, uh, injuries, um, you have to pay attention to different diseases, and some of them are not treatable by Western medicine. For example, I have, have slip disc, and the uh, TCM tell us that um, well, there is no need for operation. But then for a Western-style operation, I will have a fusion of the spinal cord, and then uh, I will feel very, very stiff. Now, um, uh, Dr. Leung, I have seen that um, on one TV program, you have spoken on behalf of uh, nurses. Now, sometimes why do people have work injuries? That's because of work pressure. And then uh, those people who retire and they are not allowed to um, uh, to continue their work. Now, I the reason I'm having uh, these uh, sunglasses is because I have floaters, and some acupuncturists can do something to improve my eyesight. And I've been to Fanling, for example, and um, the occupational. Uh, uh, clinic, um, well, they told me that they do not have a TCM. But in fact, I was told that many of my ailments can be cured by uh, acupuncturists. Um, and there are many uh, ailments which could be treated by acupuncturists. But then the Western doctors uh, adopt a totally different approach, a, a lot more invasive. Now, I respect doctors from both uh, sides of the training uh, barrier. So some ailments are better treated by, say, acupuncturists, and I feel much better afterwards. Now, I hope that uh, you will well, move ahead with the times, and then um, each be allowed to exercise its benefits and strong points. And I've also um, agreed to give my body for um, examination upon my death. Yes, uh, I'm Chairman Han, and I've also worked on clinical work. Um, now, Hong Kong is very well suited for a uh, Chinese medicine hospital. Now, we are different from mainland China. Now, uh, we have been using this uh, concept for um, treating diseases, unlike our counterparts in uh, China, which really use a co combination approach. Now, if the government is willing to build a hospital, Chinese medicine hospital, different from the hospitals in China, then we are able to turn this service into our very useful asset. Now, if you put in more resources, now of course the government has resources, uh, it, it puts in hundreds of millions of dollars into various schemes. Now, but I like to say that um, medical research is grounded on clinical trials, and um, for our uh, clinics, which are funded by well, three different parties, um, but sometimes these clinics do not even have a single uh, TCM, and we do not uh, find ourselves on the uh, pay scale that the government adopted. And then uh, we have no part in policy formulation. And 
the most we can do is to provide uh, views during consultation exercises. So the government does not seem to be very interested in developing uh, TCM. And if you want us to be uh, self-financing, this is again making life very, very difficult for us. Now, while the government representatives are here, I would like to say that the number of um, practitioners has exceeded 9,500 and with uh, about 13,000 Western doctors, well, there are already too many, um, well, TCMs. And of course, there are graduates from uh, the, um, China, so 200 uh, per year. And this is a, a bad competition and uh, not good for the trade as a whole. So these are really my views, and I hope that you will listen to the views of uh, TCMs uh, graduated in Hong Kong, and we hope to uh, make a contribution to Hong Kong. And we now have uh, Mr. Victor Ma from the Hong Kong Chinese Medicine Health Management Association. Yes, um, I am Ma Ki Kin Victor. And um, I believe that um, a TCM hospital must be led by Chinese medicine. So the uh, doctor responsible must be a TCM practitioner. Now some people say that there are two uh, responsible, uh, one Western, one Chinese. That is not what we have in mind. Um, he or she should be able to use the TCM approach for, uh, for example, you know, uh, herbal medicine, acupuncture, and so on. And with the help of Western medicine, now we should have legislation in place, uh, a kind of a TCM legislation. And I hope members here can help. But before we have such legislation, these uh, TCM hospitals would need the uh, participation of Western doctors, for example, uh, X-ray uh, or, or la laboratories or even signing death certificates. So the Western doctors have to play a part. Now, we are not against um, the diagnosis or helping uh, with emergency uh, resuscitation, for example. These are the realities that we accept, um, but we would like to have some sort of a TCM hospital legislation. Now, my third point is that we can focus on uh, acupuncture, internal medicine, geriatrics. Um, in other words, these uh, specialty uh, approaches. And then the TCM practitioners can, um, well, decide who should be inpatients or not. And then these uh, TCM hospitals should be included in the public sector. Now, we do not have any uh, precedent to go by, um, but a new TCM hospital needs time to accumulate experience. And if you want it to be self-financing from day one, it will really focus its attention on being cost-effective, and then it will not be able to improve its uh, procedures for doing things. So, if it can be included under the public sector, then uh, it can be allowed to run until it's pretty well established and then become self-financing. Now finally, now we should be able to do training, research, and then our uh, ability to use hospital as a base to promote uh, general public health. Thank you very much.
we now have um, the vice chairman, Mr. Pun Man Chun, from the HKU Bachelor of Chinese Medicine Full Time Alumni Association. Yes, I am uh, Pun Yam Chun. Now, we are in support of developing uh, TCM Hospital and it should be run by the HA and not an NGO. Now, if you are locally graduated uh, TCM practitioner, many would be uh, would feel that the NGO's pay is very, very low. And the NGO terms are really very harsh. And when you sign the contract with them, they would include competition clauses. And um, uh, let's say you sign a three-year contract. After three years, they would add in a clause. After leaving this uh, clinic, you would not be able to um, join a, a competitor within a certain radius. So th these are some harsh conditions of the NGOs. And I hope the senior management of the health department should pay attention to this. Now, the NGO uh, practitioners do you know how many there are working in the senior management? And do you know how much they are paid? Uh, well, leaving the NGOs, I actually make a lot more. And the NGOs are making profits. And it's um, very much like the cost needed to run your own business, as I'm doing right now. And. Now we have the, the uh, three party uh, clinics and in my clinic I actually have a profit I, I don't know why the NGO with the three party clinic they say they are losing money and I don't know where the money has gone. Now the locally graduated uh, practitioners now we've been trained um, using taxpayers money but then there are counterparts from the mainland and they just take an examination and they can become a TCM practitioner. And I don't know why um, that the NGOs and HAs, they do not hire us. Then why do, did they train us in the first place? So this is a waste of taxpayers' money. And uh, this is roughly the outline of what I want to say. 還想說最後一點就是說我們覺得中醫院應該採用中西醫主導模式的時候我們 With regard to the uh, integrated Chinese medicine, medicine I want to say this Many the doctors of Western medicine would advise their patients not to take any the Chinese medicine but if they are out of uh, well, if they are at their wit's end, they will try to advise the patient uh, to try acupuncture, for example. So I'm a bit concerned if uh, this uh, pilot project is uh, led by uh, Western doctors. Next, uh, we have Mr. Tree Kam Chun from the Hong Kong Society of Chinese Medicine Limited. My name is Tree Kam Kun. I'm glad that the government has agreed to build the first. Uh, Chinese medicine uh, hospital in Hong Kong. We are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we are worried that uh, if uh, this Chinese medicine hospital is not uh, founded on a very good uh, planning uh, basis or supported by right uh, expertise and uh, there is no uh, clear delineation of responsibilities, then uh, my concern is that this is a Chinese medicine hospital providing uh, uh, Chinese medicine services as part of the uh, package and not one that would uh, develop Chinese medicine. 
what is the nature of this hospital according to the LESCO brief provided to this council is that after the development with Chinese medicine development committee it is considered that a Chinese uh, a pure Chinese China, uh, medicine hospital is not viable and therefore it must be supplemented by the Western medicine but uh, no justification and rationale uh, have been advanced to support such a uh, assertion. I hope I would like the um, authority to, to tell us the basis of making such a judgment. We cannot just uh, go for convenience and expediency uh, if the if the, we have integrated the Chinese Western medicine or Chinese medicine supplemented by Western medicine, then there may be problems and confront, uh, conflicts with regard to delineation of uh, responsibilities and duties. The philosophies are different. They are very different. Uh, if we allow the, a mix of two, are we going to get neither in uh, essence? I think this uh, Chinese medicine hospital should be make, should be based on pure Chinese medicine, and uh, it, it should uh, be operated uh, with reference to the Chinese medicine uh, philosophers and the system. The management system should be based on such an arrangement, and then and then we have a clear. Arrangement. We should not uh, involve uh, non-Chinese medicine uh, practices, and then uh, the whatever the uh, Chinese medicine hospital achieves uh, will be uh, solely due to Chinese medicine practices. Uh, and I hope uh, there will be a, a a a piece of legislation on. Uh, Chinese medicine hospital, and there should be the, the uh, there should be uh, designation of uh, Chinese medicine practitioners. The, at present, we only uh, have uh, a limited uh, designation system for TCM and dispensers. Well, we have received your submission, so. Uh, we, we must move on. Next, we have Mr. Kuang Ping Nam from Chinese Medicine Informatics Hong Kong Limited. I've been following the uh, development of Chinese medicine in Hong Kong for decades, for ten, some 20 years. I have some questions. According to the report from the government, uh, a decision is made uh, on uh, the self financing mode, uh, but they have just cited. Uh, a, a very brief uh, basis of uh, reasoning. What are the data on which you base your decision? How come you come to this uh, decision so uh, hastily? According to uh, the chair lady of the Chinese Medicine Practice Subcommittee. Uh, they have uh, take on, taken on board certain views. Can the subcommittee uh, organize some activities to talk to us? Well, of course, uh, we can write in, but they should be more proactive. So um, the question is, what is the basis of that decision? And there's a particularly big problem. With point number five, if your decision is uh, well justified, uh, there's no need for the pilot scheme. The fact that we are going to have a pilot scheme uh, tells us that you need a pilot scheme because you are not confident and your reasoning is not uh, sound. So we must uh, think through how the first Chinese medicine hospital should be uh, founded. If you cannot resolve uh, all the uh, related issues 
of the hospital. How can you say that it must be self-financing? Uh, but the existing legislation is also on hospitals uh, is also problematic. Uh, private hospitals are regulated by the Department of Health, but other hospitals are regulated by the HA. What about the Chinese person hospital? If you are not clear about uh, the the uh, best way to go about it, and you need a pilot scheme, can you aff afford a, a, an equal opportunity for the three universities concerned, so that we can uh, run a Chinese medicine hospital based solely on Chinese medicine, and that should be a, a parallel pilot scheme. I've. Uh, Written a submission. Please take a look at, at my submission. And uh, we also have to uh, pay more at, pay attention to some the related issues. For example, regulating of uh, Chinese medicine. We have uh, uh, spent a lot a lot of money on standardization, but those standards seem are not uh, applied uh, strictly. So what's the use of that? Next speaker, Mr. Ng Wo Ma, Ng Wo Man. My name is Ng Wo Man. I am speaking as a user of service of Chinese uh, medicine service. I want to say something about Chinese medicine hospital. I love the traditional Chinese culture, and I, I love the how. Uh, the the practice of Chinese medicine. So I would like to th say a few things about the hospital, proposed hospital from a user's perspective. What kind of hospital do we want? We want to have a Chinese uh, medicine hospital that uh, provides suitable treatment uh, based on the rich tradition of TCM. And who are the clients? I think it should be the general public. Uh, the well-being of the general public should come first. It should not be, not be there to satisfy people's aspiration for the research, and I don't think you should uh, regard the patients as uh, uh, subjects for scientific research. I think that I think that should be a. A uh, com dedicated committee to monitor the development of this hospital, and there should be an, a good uh, communication channel established between the community, this, this uh, council, and the stakeholders. We need a, a Chinese medicine hospital uh, which has espouses uh, pure traditional Chinese medicine with philosophy. Rather than a uh, Chinese medicine hospital that is only superficially Chinese medicine, I just don't know why the uh, administration has come to the decision that an integrated Chinese Western medicine is a better approach. On what basis was that decision or that assertion made? And also, should the Chinese medicine hospital be regulated like other hospital under the? Existing regu uh, legal framework, you know that uh, the the two sets of philosophy are very different. If we set up a truly Chinese uh, medicine hospital, there should be a new piece of legislation to define what is uh, Chinese medicine hospital, with reference to Chinese culture. There's no need to. Uh, Tailor made the regulations uh, to tie in with uh, the system for existing uh, hospitals. I urge members to set up a subcommittee under the panel on health services to ov to oversee the development in this regard, so that we can uh, take on board new I ideas and uh, move ahead uh, with uh, the times in uh, taking forward Chinese medicine uh, hospital project. In, in other words, I want uh, the hospital to be led by TCM practitioners, and uh, do we have to safeguard the employment opportunities of uh, TCM practitioners? 
in the arrangement. Uh, many deputations uh, have uh, spoken on this. I just I don't think that uh, if you are you get you you are trained to be a TCM practitioner, it's not really about uh, getting stable employment or good income. I think it's about time we have received your uh, submission. So we move on to the next uh, speaker, Mr. Li Ying Fai. I'm president of Registered TCM Practitioners in Hong Kong, and I'm also a doctor of uh, TCM Internal Medicine. Well, whatever we do, we need to uh, invest in resources. The main answer approach is to have an integrated Chinese and Western medicine, and uh, we must be given the same amount of resources like uh, Western medicines. Otherwise, it's impossible for development to take place. And uh, TCM practitioners should be paid the same as uh, doctors of Western uh, medicine. Administrators and managers of the Chinese uh, medicine practitioners must be uh, uh, professionals in the uh, Chinese medicine. Last year, BTC offer some uh, collaborations or courses with our outside uh, institutions to manage uh, Chinese medicine hospitals. But they are not uh, experts as such. They are, and many of the uh, techniques and uh, examination techniques used by Western medicines are not really useful in Chinese medicine uh, practices. So we must come up with another system for Chinese medicine hospital. Uh, because uh, the philosophy is one based on uh, yin and yang and uh, traditional Chinese uh, philosophy. And Chinese uh, medicine practitioners must be the, taking the lead in an integrated pi uh, pilot. And the purpose is to modernize Chinese medicine practices, not to westernize uh, the same. We need to attract a local uh, TCM uh, practitioners, train, 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 train the right people, and there should be long-term research con conducted based on modern scientific uh, biochemical uh, explanations. And training must be the key. And that should be an uh, independent Chinese uh, medicine hospital authority to manage the hospital. Next, we have Mr. Ng Hong Singh from an institute uh, on uh, acupuncture treatment center. You may not be familiar with uh, this institute. But uh, I think fellow practitioners are familiar with uh, this approach of uh, needle therapy. Eighty percent of uh, our uh, members have been trained in this. But this is not what I'm going to talk about today. Please wake up when you fight for something. For example, Miss Lam Chong Man has said something you should have uh, waken up after hearing what she said. We are being treated unequally. There are problems of inequality. We are all Chinese, but we have been uh, well tricked by Westerners, including Chairman, you, you yourself. Why do I say that? I have a photocopy from an Oxford Dictionary. Three minutes, of course, is not enough. I need more than three days, but I'm not going to overrun. The word doctor 
I have been fooled by Westerners. My English is very limited, and I check the dictionary. And in the dictionary, doctor says is uh, 医生大夫, doctor, or boxy. All three are called doctors. So you are being um, called CMP rather than doctor. Do you accept this title? And if our title is not correct, then um, your speeches uh, will not be respected. And uh, if people have uh, taken a nap or two naps, uh, well, you will not be able to finish the speeches. I think we should have our title corrected. And we are not on the establishment of the government's uh, lists or pay scales. And it's like uh, a house with um, unequal pillars. One is longer, the other one is shorter. So it's very, very unequal. Hong Kong is not poor. We have a lot of money. It's not whether you can do it, but whether you will do it. So uh, that's all from me. We now have uh, the chairman, Mr. Yu Kok Wai, from the Hong Kong Chinese Medi Medicine Practitioners Rights General Union. Uh, Mr. Albert Chan has said in NEDGCO, which I can quote, he said that Western doctors have to uh, will rule over the TCM practitioners, but can the um, witchcraft or witch doctor rule over Western doctors? Now, we have major diseases such as SARS as well as um, the basic law, Article 23, and um, these problems are not solved, and uh, 299 people died. Now, so SARS came very silently and then uh, disappeared silently. And we also had uh, our TCM practitioners helping to relieve the situation. Now, the basic law, Article 23, leading to half a million of people going taken to the streets. And because it has uh, no uh, legal uh, uh, pub formal support, it is still um, not really implemented. Now, so for the establishment establishment of a formal TCM hospital, now there must be some legal basis for this. And our association was among the first to suggest this. There must be a proper TCM hospital, and then, and only then, can we have a formal uh, director and then we can see a scenario where the two types of doctors are treated equally. I have written to uh, Mr. Kowing Man many times, and um, trying to build up to build uh, a TCM hospital. In fact, f since 1872, we already had uh, such a hospital in Shang Wan, and in fact. There is a much lower uh, well inpatient rate in the Chinese hospital versus the Western hospitals. Now, in the 1950s, we already had an integrated approach, but now half a century later, we are still learning this lesson. Now, you can go to a website, um, and we have eight recommendations. Number one, these hospitals must have um, as the major uh, initiative a TCM approach as well as education. And we cannot have a combination or co-leaders. And we have we we need to have the proper legislation. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yu, Mr. Yu, 
the other six points can be given to us in writing. Yes, we have already done so. Thank you. We now have a lecturer, Mr. Michael Chung, from the School of Chinese Medicine, CUHK. Now, for the establishment of DCM Hospital, we agree and we are in favour. Now, in fact, in 1998, we've established uh, ourselves and trained 220 TCM uh, practitioners, as well as more than 700 related personnel. Now, what I like to say is that to have TCM education in Hong Kong, we must have a pure and dedicated knowledge and uh, combining the latest technology. And uh, we have a five-year or even a six-year curriculum. Our year one students already uh, know some very basic uh, training for emergency treatments. But because of a shortage of facilities, um, these knowledge cannot be applied. So this is quite a waste. We have also learned um, some uh, radiography, but we are not allowed to prescribe or or to refer um, patients for um, X-ray or, radi or radiography uh, treatment. So we have been trained, but it's just that we are not allowed to do this. Now we hope that the TCM hospital can give us a very good area for learning and training. Now, but what is the reason? Um, barring our graduates from doing such a thing. Now, the proposed uh, TCM hospital, it could well be the world's number one. But uh, we can only provide an integrative uh, treatment. Maybe this is limited by the law. If that is the case, maybe we ask the government to review the legislation. Now, we also focus on our role in this kind of treatment. Now, in the past, uh, we can sign a, a leave certificate. And how can we be? Or when can we be allowed to treat uh, serious cases? Now, so these as TCM practitioners, we would like to see these days coming. Now, another example. Now we have a Western restaurant. Let's say if you want to have a Chinese restaurant, but can only have a very limited menu. So, well, that is quite ridiculous. Now we must have a full-scale uh, TCM hospital in order to uh, really show off all our strengths. We now have uh, Mr. Chen Lin Chun from Hans Academy. Um, members. Now, ever since the topic of TCM Hospital came out, we focus our attention on the technical side, um, but we have yet to see from the government a clear cut blueprint. Uh, Mr. Cole has told us something in principle that we should go ahead with the TCM Hospital. But that's only in principle. But this is only one step in the overall development of TCM in Hong Kong. So even when the hospital is completed, when everybody is very happy, does that mean that TCM has reached a, a, a very satisfactory development? I don't think so. Now, I think we should work towards um, reducing medical expenditure. Now, from the public's angle, they should be given a choice to provide um, good medical service at reasonable cost. Now, the mainland main China has already undergone some um, review, and they have done some work. And if they were to increase the proportion of Chinese medicine, they can help to save 700 billion renminbi. So this is like 27% uh, of all medical expenses. And in the case of Hong Kong, we'll be able to save $20 billion 
So this is a rough figure. Now, the government must work more um, to on, on this area, but we have yet to see government uh, taking a proactive role. Uh, how uh, TCM can benefit the public. If the government wanted uh, TCM to be self-financing, then I think the government is not seeing the benefits of TCM because self-financing is really not helping TCM at all. Um, they may survive, they may die. And you are not making TCM to play its role to help government reduce medical expenditure. If members agree that uh, expenditure is our concern, then we should develop um, TCM full scale. Now, if we can have more TCM for the grassroots population and to increase its effectiveness, then we can reduce medical expenditure. Now, I think the government should um, develop TCM hospital, but that is not the final goal. But looking at the uh, general livelihood uh, of the public, now the important thing is whether uh, TCM can develop its own uh, benefits. Now everyone is looking at Hong Kong and the development of TCM, and uh, they are looking to see if we succeed or fail. Next, we have um, from the Hong Kong Baptist University School of Chinese Medicine Alumni Association, Mr. Lam Chan Pong, a special rapporteur on the policy of TCM development. I'm now doing a PhD in uh, Beijing. Now, I have written everything in the paper, and I'm not going to repeat them. Now, I hope that the government can look at expert views from China. Now, mainly in China, they're already having a different view um, on TCM. And we mustn't go down a wrong path, or paths that have proved to be wrong. Now, TCM taking the lead means that TCM practitioners taking the lead. And in China, they have um, made this very clear for uh, Chinese medicine. So, the... Um, the, the ICWH approach uh, may not work very well. Now, we should adopt and establish um, Chinese medicine taking the lead and exercising its creativity. Now, I hope the government can see this, and not just to say that they have no uh, study on this. Now, my third point is, now, a uh, combined CW approach is very vague and uh, it's not specific enough. Now, I hope the Bureau will understand more about the TCM uh, situation because you are using terms that you don't even know the meaning. And then in law, the TCM practitioners should not be discriminated against. Uh, the TCM practitioners have been barred from dealing with um, certain serious diseases and, and not allowed um, to deal with uh, such cases. Now, in SARS, um, the, in Guangzhou, uh, some hospitals can achieve zero infection and zero death rate, and they can uh, make serious improvement um, on the uh, osteo uh, condition of patients. Now, I hope that uh, the Bureau can look at the cost-effectiveness of uh, TCM. You know, people are getting older now, and if you uh, improve TCM, this can help. And uh, as you've just heard, and every year you can save uh, hundreds of billions of dollars every year. Please do not regard the development of TCM as a waste of money. It can certainly uh, incre uh, increase the revenue for Hong Kong. To avoid uh, going down the wrong path, uh, we should uh, adhere to scientific principles. Uh, if we have a hospital just in name, it's not the right way to develop TCM. and we. 
we should not we should do away with uh, unscientific concepts. But our research uh, ground is um, mon uh, monopolized by the doctors of uh, Western medicine. So there has been v very little research in Chinese medicine. Your speaking time is up. Uh, next, we have Dr. Yu Chao Leung from Hong Kong Association for Integration of Chinese Western Medicine, Chairman. Uh, setting up a Chinese uh, medicine hospital will make the uh, practice uh, more professional. I'm a registered uh, TCM and a registered doctor in Western medicine. So I do know something about the integration of Chinese Western medicine. I respect uh, TCM practitioners. Uh, they have been uh, doing a lot to upgrade their professionalism. Today, uh, uh, I would like to s uh, present a, a, a balanced view. To uh, enable you to make a balanced uh, discussion. Here, there is no personal interest involved. I'm concerned about uh, patients' interests and the development of uh, TCM. This uh, mode of uh, operation must be one that led by TCM practitioners and supported by the Western doctors. If we have a, a Chinese medicine hospital based uh, purely on Chinese medicine. There are precedents, for example, in Germany and uh, on the mainland, but there's more. For example, there's a, a Chinese medicine uh, hospital in Germany with 17 people. But if you want uh, our Chinese medicine hospital to be a well established one with a bright future, then we, we must. Uh, have an integrated approach. Uh, TCM practitioners are no worse off than their Western medicine counterparts. You may train uh, Chinese uh, medicine practitioners uh, based on uh, evidence-based training. You may need to uh, get the support of uh, Western doctors. Hospitals are a modern uh, institution. Hong Kong hospitals are up to the international standards, and we are spending a little, and our healthcare standards are very high. This is something we should be get about. So it's important that we consider the reliability of uh, different approaches. But my time is up, already up. Just one quick word. There should be a, a Chinese medicine hospital and a Western medicine hospital and the integrated approach in the middle. There, sh there should be a middle of the way approach in between. We have should have a a big hospital with uh, both Chinese and Western medicine uh, offered. Next, Professor Li Hongdong from uh, Gong Gongwa Hospital. Chairman members, we are in support of uh, the development of Chinese medicine hospital uh, because of time constraint. I want to talk about our experience on uh, treating inpatient under the integrated Chinese Western medicine. At present, there is no hospital, to, uh, Chinese medicine hospital. We only have uh, outpatient service. So it's important that we set up a Chinese medicine hospital based on Chinese medicine. But the hospital cannot be built in uh, the short term, in the coming two to three years. 
uh, therefore we propose that we select some wards and some uh, diseases and allow the integrated Chinese Western medicine to be applied to such uh, patients so that they can learn how this can work. Tonghua groups of hospitals uh, started to introduce uh, in a Tonghua Hospital and Kuanghua Hospital this approach of integrated services for inpatients and uh, including acupuncture. Uh, this has been extended to five hospitals. The entire scheme has been supported by the uh, Board of uh, Tonghua Groups of Hospital and uh, Western Doctors. A t a integrated team was set up in Guanghua Hospital some years ago involving TCM in five specialties and a, a dozen or so diseases for which uh, the integrated service uh, would be offered. We have achieved satisfactory results. For example, for treating the food problems faced by diabetic uh, patients, uh, we have been able to uh, speed up the uh, healing process. And we have been able to use uh, acupuncture to treat some symptoms of uh, allergic symptoms. And also in treating other diseases, uh, we have been able to demonstrate that there are merits in having an integrated approach. There will be 56 uh, Chinese medicine beds uh, in Guanghua Hospital after its redevelopment. We uh, are in favor of the government's proposal to set up a new Chinese medicine hospital so, so as to take forward the development of uh, Chinese medicine. Uh, I hope uh, this plan will be introduced in phase. We would uh, patiently wait for the plan to be implemented. We support the uh, pilot scheme on integrated Chinese Western medicine. The Tunghua groups of hospital will also actively participate in the pilot scheme. But I don't think we should uh, think that the uh, pilot scheme will provide a complete refer uh, reference. I think there should be a, ch a Chinese medicine section in existing hospitals so the patient can uh, have a choice so that we can uh, provide better training ground for professional Chinese medicine practitioners and to uh, gain some experience for the uh, future Chinese medicine hospital. Next, uh, we have uh, Ms. Winnie Zhang from the Hong Kong Medicine Dealers Guild. I'm glad to have, to have this uh, opportunity to share with you our views. In that report, uh, uh, is silent uh, on uh, the provision of a uh, Chinese medicine. Well, you have to attach importance to both the provision of medicine and the provision of uh, uh, healthcare services. Just like a restaurant, you have to uh, pay attention to ingredients before you can uh, offer good food. Um, because um, medicine. Uh, does have a bearing on quality of uh, healthcare services. I agree with many of the points made by other deputations. I also agree that uh, under this panel, there should be a subcommittee, a dedicated com subcommittee on the development of uh, this new Chinese medicine hospital. And uh, we should be involved. Uh, TCM practitioners are facing a lot of constraints uh, in offering services. For example, no injection is uh, allowed and they cannot carry out operations. I hope uh, the uh, TCM practitioners should be allowed to lead uh, the operation of the uh, Chinese medicine hospital. Next we have uh, Ms. Pang Yin Lai, President of Hong Kong Chinese Medicine Clinical Studies Association. Good afternoon, Chairman and members. I'm from Hong Kong Chinese Medicine Clinical Studies Association. My name is Pang Yin Lai. The first point I want to make well, is my, my forward, so to speak, is this. How can we ensure 
proper collaboration between Chinese and Western uh, medical practitioners. The starting point is that the administration should shoulder the responsibility to provide the right hardware and software of a Chinese medicine hospital. The first step taken uh, was the registration of TCM practitioner, and the second step should be the uh, establishment of the system. And uh, Chinese medicine should be part of the public health care system. Only through this can Chinese medicine be uh, developed, and it would uh, resolve a number of problems identified by other speakers. For example, the fees paid by the patient, the pay of uh, TCM practitioners, the training of TCM practitioners, and the uh, collaboration of uh, Chinese and uh, Western medicine. It seems that uh, the setting up of the Chinese medicine hospital represent our uh, ideal vision, but it seems to be in. Uh, it seems to be hastily introduced. I think that should be the the specialty of Chinese medicine introduced into the system first. On the mainland. The hospitals offer Western medicine, and there are a separate division offering Chinese medicine. We want the Western medicine practitioners understand and the merits of Chinese medicine, and then gradually we can. Developed Chinese medicine hospitals. Uh, I don't think the hospital should be based on purely Chinese medicine. There will be beds, and uh, the patient may be an acute patient. The patient may be also taking Western medicine. So we must involve. Uh, uh, Western medicine practitioners. So before we have the Chinese medicine hospitals, hospital, we should uh, have a Chinese medicine division set up in uh, hospitals, offering Western medicine. Now, uh, time's up, Mr. Li Kaiping. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman and Government officials. Uh, thank you for arranging uh, for our attendance at this uh, public hearing. We work in a tripartite NGO TCM clinic. There must be a proper uh, space of development for uh, TCM, and to do that, uh, there are three prerequisites or three principles. First. Chinese medicine practitioners and the Western medicine practitioners should be to get equal treatment, and there should be a dedicated room of development for Chinese medicine. There are two; they are in two different spheres. There are different theories, different philosophy. They can both uh, improve health and treat diseases. So, in developing Chinese medicine or Chinese medicine hospital, sufficient. Resources should be provided. We have more than ten or forty-two hospitals, and in the coming plan, we are going to have a Kai Tech Hospital and the Children's Hospital. They are all in the public sector. Why do you want to make the first Chinese medicine hospital self-financing? You must allow some room for development of Chinese medicine. In the 1990s, when the HK was developed, it wanted to give the TCM hospitals or, or to have some sort of uh, autonomy for TCM practice, so that it would not have um, well uh, Western doctors uh, well governing or ruling the TCM practitioners, but to ask the TCM practice 
to be self-financing is going a step backwards and it cannot really uh, develop properly. Now thirdly, it must develop local personnel for this and to set aside resources for this purpose. Now for development of a profession, uh, people's skill is very important. We must retain these talents and we have three universities training um, these practitioners. You should uh, pick the best person to train them so that they can um, well develop their talents and contribute to a TCM hospital. Now in a future hospital, if we are limited to only the three types of diseases, that is not enough. That is stifling the development of TCM. Now I think the government should understand you do not want to see the practitioners able only to cure three diseases. So I hope that you will have more uh, preparation because a good start is a uh, half success. We now have a permanent advisor from Port Oil Hospital, Mr. Jackson Wong. Now I think the first TCM hospitals should have uh, five points. Uh, it should provide um, good service at reasonable cost. It should provide a clinical service and continuous education. Three, for pro doing research. Four, for integration of C&W medicine. And then fifthly, to develop this uh, TCM business. And now, the to be run by NGO, there are very good points. It can ensure that it's sustainable and the NGO operation can reflect problems um, to the hospital or to the government and it will avoid any uh, unhealthy competition between the private and public sector, sector. and it will also allow uh, cooperation for the uh, hospitals and it will accommodate um, different schools of thought and many NGOs have these um, uh, ability for Port Oil Hospital. We are already uh, providing services and we have experience in uh, an integrated approach and we have trained many TCM personnel and Port Oil has uh, 20 mobile units giving service to 120 units. We have seven clinics and to provide free medical service to the poor and Port Oil has um, well treated wow uh, hundreds of thousands and we have uh, many medical personnel and we are able to uh, develop in a sustainable way and if we were to provide uh, TCM service we can help it to modernize and we have also taken part in the pilot scheme of the government and uh, this is taking the first step. So based on these uh, previous points, to allow experienced NGOs to run the TCM hospital is an appropriate way to do things. Now we have heard from 31 deputations or individuals. Now first of all, um, we only have 10 minutes left so we're going to extend by 15 minutes and uh, we have a motion by uh, Mr. Chan and uh, modified by Mr. Fernando Cheung and uh, I think we can raise this first and then to be dealt with later on. Now um, now, really, it's for the uh, government to respond. Now, to promote TCM hospital is one main area of the present uh, government. Now, we are looking at uh, the issue seriously, and uh, we would like TCM to play a more important role to contribute to the to public health. We have made report to you um, earlier in the mar in the year, and as well as the pilot scheme. Now we understand that the TCM practitioners 
have uh, are looking f eagerly towards these uh, new arrangements and looking at the various committees that we have set up and there is constant liaison and uh, trying to collect feedback as to how these schemes can be implemented. Now we are happy to have this chance here today in this panel to listen to the views of these stakeholders. Now for the development of DCM Hospital, we have um, accepted the views of the relevant um, panel that um, the development of such a hospital can support the three universities as teaching universities as well as uh, to provide training and research and generally boosting quality. Now, apart from these, we have earmarked a site in uh, Changguan O, originally meant for um, a private hospital, now earmarked for TCM hospital. And we are looking at the details and logistics of such a scheme and will make a recommendation to the government. And the government will certainly consider the views of the committee. And together with the committee, we have some sort of consensus. First of all, well, with the uh, development, uh, with the uh, consensus of the committee, we believe that uh, we should establish, uh, well, to establish a purely TCM hospital, we are going to face obstacles because it has to deal with complicated cases and uh, serious cases. And if that is the case, you will have to use really advanced equipment or for emergency treatment you will have to use a Western approach. So if it's a purely TCM, then you are not allowed to use Western equipment and that create difficulties. And if it is allowed to use uh, Western equipment, then it is only TCM in name and not in practice. So we are saying that the TCM hospital should be TCM taking the lead, but if necessary, the Western uh, medicine should be helping. And that is the, the way we see this new hospital in a combined kind of approach so that they can complement one another to make sure that the patients get comprehensive care. Now, apart from this, uh, we are proposing that NGOs can run this on a self-financing basis, and we understand that there are views which says that uh, TCM hospitals should be incorporated into the public sector. But for NGOs, um, they can. They have a lot of experience. Um, well, providing such care, and quite a few of these NGOs are interested in developing TCM hospitals. So we are of the view that for these non-profit making NGOs to run the first TCM hospital, this will be more flexible and to give us more time to look at the need of these uh, TCM hospital service. Now, to have a, a pilot scheme on an integrated approach, we know that it takes time to have a hospital. We are of the view that we should have some uh, specific um, examples and studies and trying to accumulate experience. And with this experience, we can uh, form the basis for the mode of operation of the future hospital. Uh, we are planning to have a two-year um, pilot scheme starting from the third quarter of this year focusing on three diseases to provide a combination approach to for treatment including uh, stroke patients, uh, lower body as well as cancer palliative care. Now under this pilot scheme we will be focusing on these three areas on uh, clinical schemes and to provide follow-up um, outpatient service and each of these pilot schemes uh, will be done in designated hospitals and to work in conjunction with teaching universities and we will provide uh, expert uh, service and to boost communication between Chinese and Western medicine. 
We've also been inviting Hong Kong universities to take part in these pilot schemes as well as the training. Now for the timetable for the TCM hospital, now in the coming months we're going to discuss with the committee to devise the best method forward um, to solve all the challenges ahead of us to ensure that the patients are protected when under treatment. So we must uh, separate the responsibilities of the various uh, medical personnel and these details will be discussed and looked at and uh, the way of governing and will also be uh, discussed. Uh, thank you, Chair. Now, members, if you like to ask questions, please do so. We have heard um, from Mr. Yun. Um, well, he is repeating what's on the paper and not responding to the deputations. I'd like to thank the deputations and individuals for coming here today. And now for us, let's go to discuss Chinese medicine. Um, you can see that the government is really not paying a lot of attention and importance um, to this area. Now, I felt very happy when I first heard about the site EMR for TCM Hospital. When it comes to the budget for the Finance Committee, no budget was set aside for this. And I became suspicious. And now with this document, it is now going to be self-financing. Now, how can a self-financing hospital be possible to do teaching and research and so on? You are like, it's like, you know, uh, asking a student to study and then work and pay for all the fees at the same time. How can they manage so many things at the same time? Now, the government is not showing any commitment at all in this area, if you ask me. Now, you have said it. Now, the 18 district clinics are facing a lot of problems, and the government is not helping them to solve the problems. Now, for example, students going there for internship, they are like cheap labor. They have very, very little pay. And after graduation, they also have very, very little pay. And the government wanted to develop uh, TCM, but not improving their uh, remuneration. You cannot have your cake and eat it. So the government must treat the TCM practitioners better. So I have a motion, five points. First of all, you should um, establish the TCM hospital ASAP under the public sector, and then to turn the 18 TCM clinics into the public sector and then to improve the remuneration of these TCM practitioners as well as the graduates. Some graduates only help to do dispensing and they have uh, very poor prospects. But you need talents to do this so you should treat them better. And then you should have a special um, department to help these TCM industry um, to have proper promotion. Now, they need to follow GMP, but when it comes to registering of the uh, medical products, they're facing a lot of difficulties. Now, they should set up a special department to help them and to allow them to merge into the international arena. And we've also heard it um, from you. We look at treatment as well as medicine. The, the 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 products right now and then the final point now the registration of TCM has taken 15 years and in Lechco we do not have any representative from the TCM sector so I hope under the panel we can set up a uh, subcommittee on uh, TCM and Chinese medicine to follow up the relevant issues, uh, Dr. Fernando Chiang has proposed some amendments, although I may think that it's a, a bit uh, repetitive and uh, it overlaps with other things, but it's uh, beneficial to, 
to, to my original motion, so I'm going to support his amendments. Two more members would like to speak, Mr. Peter Chang and Dr. Fernando Chang. Uh, because of time constraint, I'll proceed to uh, the handling of the motion after the two members have spoken. Mr. Peter Chang. I think today government officials have uh, failed to respond to all the deputations. I thank all the deputations for coming because uh, without your attendance, we we'll have been kept in the dark. Uh, you have told us many things which we didn't know. Uh, there are more to be told, I'm, I'm sure. But you think I think uh, these two sides are the Pose apart. The uh, Chinese medicine hospital is going to be built in uh, Chongqingo. Uh, we were so glad, and then we found out that uh, it was going to be self-financing. The last item was uh, about the Buddhist hospital, and uh, you see in paragraph eleven, it says that uh, for the refurbishment, it's a uh, four hundred eighty million dollars, and it's. Granted, just like that. So building a hospital will cost you hundreds of millions of dollars. If an NGO can raise that kind of money and runs the hospital on self-financing basis, then who are they exploiting? The TCM practitioners, or are they going to charge uh, a lot, a, a high fee? Unless the, they get uh, someone to donate. Uh, the hundreds of uh, millions of dollars, so, so as to enhance his reputation. It's just like the universities; uh, they are they have to do a lot to supplement uh, the donation, which will provide the hardware. Uh, and uh, I still don't know. Uh, whether TCM practitioners will take the lead or Western doctors will take the lead, uh, I hope this today would just be the uh, beginning of a much more uh, elaborate process. The uh, administration has f so far failed to answer our questions. We must continue uh, the discussion. We must uh, continue to uh, communicate with the. Uh, with the TCM sector, we must uh, ascertain the, the attitude on Chinese medicine and Chinese medicine hospital on the part of the administration. Do you require a response? I don't know how they can uh, properly respond to these uh, views. Uh, Dr. Fernando Zhang, I thank all the deputations for coming. We are about to build a Chinese medicine hospital. This is uh, theory news. We have been waiting for this for years. Hong Kong is a well positioned is well positioned to promote and develop the integration of Chinese and mes Western medicine, but over the years it was all about talk. And uh, in Hong Kong uh, it's always the uh, Western Doctors who take the lead. We have three universities providing training in uh, Chinese medicine, and uh, at long last, we are going to see some hardware provided for Chinese medicine. But uh, it seems that we are going to repeat what we did for Chinese uh, medicine clinics. It shows a lack of commitment. Imagine that uh, our medical schools are self-financing in providing training for Western doctors. Can they really to get off the ground? Uh, that's impossible. If you want to ask some organization to run the Chinese medicine hospital, I dare not uh, belittle the uh, ability. Of uh, NGOs, 
of course, I know, Chairman, you want to disband the hospital authority. But whatever we do, we need to be committed. The government has to be committed in terms of resources. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Chen Hang Bang, and uh, I'm so, oh, he's not with us. I, I, I move my amendments to clarify uh, some aspects in the motion, because in the original motion, uh, it's not mentioned whether the Chinese medicine hospital should be part of the public health care system. I just want to uh, make sure that it's clear. And I want to make sure that this panel adopts a clear provision that uh, the uh, Chinese medicine hospital should be subvented, uh, should, should get recurrent subventions. And also, if we want to improve the uh, remuneration and uh, conditions of uh, employment of uh, TCM practitioners and uh, t TCM graduates, well, we are talking about uh, having a proper series structure introduced for them. Many people would like to get uh, treatment from uh, TCM practitioners. It's very good to have uh, integration of uh, Chinese and uh, Western medicines. Uh, the clinics, the Chinese medicine clinics are self-financing, meaning that uh, many gr people from the grassroots have no access. So we support a public sector uh, integration of uh, Chinese and Western medicine. It's not just uh, about the uh, well-being of the uh, Chinese medicine sector, but also uh, it's about public interest. We do not see eye to eye with the administration. I hope the government would um, uh, mend its way and uh, do away with this self-financing proposal. All right. Uh, this motion is uh, patently related to this uh, uh, agenda item, so let's deal with it. Uh, the uh, original motion and the proposed amendments have been uh, printed for members' reference, so I won't repeat it. But we should uh, delete point number five. If you urge the government to do one, two, three, four, you should not ask the administration to do point five. It's within our own jurisdiction. It's got nothing to do with the administration. Whether we set up a subcommittee is a uh, for us to decide. We should not urge the administration to set up a subcommittee under the panel. Yes? If we delete number five. Uh, it's okay. Uh, the original motion and the amendments uh, will still be okay. Point number five is about our own business. Whether we set up a subcommittee is for us to decide. I don't think it would uh, affect uh, the original motion and the proposed amendments. Maybe we should have a a different version. I don't want to hinder anything. If we take away point number five, and Mr. Chen Hanpan. It's not here. If you want to delete number five uh, in his absence, uh, I don't know what we can do. Because Mr. Chen Ban said he agreed to the amendments proposed by Mr. Fernando Chang. So may I suggest that we pass the motion with the amendments as they are? Oh, what well, they can propose amendments. We decide whether the amendments are agreeable. Are we not talking about Dr. Fernando's amendments? I propose you delete number five and uh, propose another motion. Maybe we can ask Dr. Fernando Jones to propose an amendment to take away point number five. All right, the chairman, please uh, take it that uh, my proposed amendments 
also cover the deletion of point number five. Okay, yes. Let's do it quickly. So I won't read out the proposed amendments and uh, I just want to say that uh, point number five will be deleted. And now, with those in favor of the proposed amendments, please raise your hand. So ag it's agreed unanimously. And uh, I've been advised by the clerk that I do not read to read out the original motion since uh, the amendments are accepted. I, I suppose members are also in support of point number five, and that is a uh, set up setting up a subcommittee on Chinese medicine under this panel to follow up uh, relevant issues of uh, TCM and uh, practitioners. I'll invite the Secretariat to draft the relevant uh, document, and members will be invited to adopt uh, the proposal next time. Uh, just a reminder, we have to queue up to wait for our turn to set up a such a subcommittee. All right, anything under AOB? If not, thank you all for coming, deputations, and thank you to the Permanent Secretary.